Hi there, and welcome back to our Activities and Dementia Care series. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about activities that you and your loved one can do in your living room. Typically, when I think about the living room, I think about activities that are restful, that are relaxing. Watching TV, laying on the couch, recharging my batteries. May also think about sharing some time with friends or family, socializing in your living room. Those are great things, but there are other things that we can also do as well. Um, so today I'm going to show you some of those things. But first I want to talk a little bit about music. And music is a great way to redirect moods and behaviors and just even generate good conversation, dance a little bit, tap your toes, clap your hands. You know, it just changes the mood that, that there may be in the home at that time. So what I have today on my TV, I have YouTube playing some old 50s and 60s music. The other thing that I have in our home as well is an Alexa, and I'm able to talk to Alexa from wherever I'm at uh, in, the, in the living room, and she'll play music that I ask her to play. So I may say, Alexa, play 50s music. Alexa, play old hymns. Alexa, play whatever it may be that your loved one enjoys listening to, that you enjoy listening to with your loved one. Um, it, it really does help kind of redirect some of those moods and behaviors throughout the day. Um, I would encourage you, if you're not utilizing it now, to utilize it. Just put on a little bit, something that's easy, uh, and, and see what happens uh, as, you, as you go through the day. Another thing that you can do in your living room is exercise. And I want to talk a little bit about exercise as part of uh, self-care. And, but it also is a fun and leisure thing too, uh, if you look at it that way. Um, so today I brought in the living room, a chair. You can do it on the love seat or the couch, wherever is comfortable for you. But uh, what we would do is just sit down and I've wrote, written out on my whiteboard some simple activities or exercises that you could do with your loved one. And I think having it written down for them may help them also visually see if they can um, what, what's going to happen next? It's not an extensive list, so it's, it's short and simple. Um, and, and activities themselves are very short and simple as well. So um, I would just keep that when you're making your activities or your exercises, I would make them short and sweet and easy to do for your loved one. Nothing too strenuous. Another idea is uh, having some pool noodles with you. They came together like this. I bought it at Walmart for a dollar, cut it in half, and now I have two bats that you can bat around the balloon with um, if it's you know safe. It's a fun activity that everybody enjoys doing. Um, the other thing you can do with your pool, pool noodle is exercise with it. Move it left and right, up and down to the sides. Um, you know, have them march with it. You can march up and down, all kinds of things that you can do with that. A beach ball is fun to toss back and forth. And another game that I enjoy doing and picked up at Walmart as well, is a cone and then some ring t rings that you can toss. This game could be done anywhere and everywhere um, in your home, outside. Very simple and fun uh, thing to do and it also gives you a little bit of exercise through the, through the day as well. Uh, I also have a card table back here and uh, a puzzle. Now you could do all kinds of things at the card table but having something set up for them where they can go and try to just put things together through the day, pieces here and there. We're actually making an activity. This puzzle is 300 pieces and it has their bigger pieces. The dollar store, Walmart, Target, wherever you go shopping at, um, Amazon, you can pick up some puzzles. Uh, you know, if the 300 pieces is too many, get a smaller, a smaller size puzzle with bigger pieces. That may be helpful as well. This one, I set it up so they have the, the picture here, but there's also a picture that came with it so they can see. Um, and even if they're not able to put the pieces together, you can talk about the picture. You can have them separate the pieces by color. Um, you can have them put the, put the puzzle together, all the edges. You know, different types of activities you can do with the puzzle itself rather than just putting it together. But you can also have them, um, have them pick them up and put them in there for you. Have them take them out and just have it be a tactile activity where you're feeling things as you, as you go through the, the process. Have them pick them up and put them in. Maybe count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Count them. Just be creative with how you're doing that. The uh, puzzle may not be something they're able to do 
you know, putting all the pieces together and having it look exactly like the picture, but it may be something that they enjoy doing, just the process of sitting down, feeling the, feeling the pieces, and moving them back and forth. Similar to that is our UNO game. And in our activities in Dementia Care series, the, the overview, we talked about adapting. And this is one of the activities that I talked about adapting. This game comes with reverse, skip, draw fours, draw twos, all kinds of crazy cards um, that can be kind of difficult sometimes for a loved one to follow, especially if they have dementia. Um, and so what I've done with this deck is I've taken out those cards. So all of the draw fours, reverse, skips, those cards I've taken out. So now you have the game and you can still play the same way, matching the color or the number. If your loved one's not able to do that activity, like or not able to play the game like that any longer, then maybe even just having them match the color, make piles of colors that they can have on there. So make piles, have them count out stacks of 10, stacks of five, maybe just having them shuffle, you know, then it becomes a tactile activity. Um, and so, again, an activity that you can do with your loved one in the living room, at the coffee table, at the uh, card table, wherever you feel comfortable. This table here, a little end table that folds, you can bring it to wherever they're at. Um, another leisure activity that they may enjoy doing is reading, reading some magazines, uh, going through, looking at food, having conversations, reminiscing about things from the past, even just generating some conversation. Um, I have a magazine here from Sacramento and it has the bridge on it, the Sacramento bridge on it. And so maybe just having a conversation about the river, the bridge, downtown, places that they may have been um, if they're from Sacramento or you know anything really you can go, but also look at um, old photo albums. This generates conversations as well. And so just looking at uh, you know old family pictures, like, you know, reminiscing with your loved one and seeing what they're able to say and, and remember from the past, um, you may hear things that you've never heard before. Um, and the last thing here is just another travel book and just having them look at some of these bigger pictures with uh, lots of color, stimulating things that help them engage in conversation, engage in the activity, even if it just is that they're looking at the book and flipping through the pages. Flipping the pages, left, going back and forth. Um, again, it's giving them something to do. They're utilizing their time, and they're engaged in that activity. Uh, so these are just a few things that we have here today, and I wanted to show you um, how you know you can utilize some of the space in your house and activities that you uh, could create on your own. I hope it was helpful for you, and hope to see you again. Thank you.